my presentation is only an appetizer for you. If uh, you would like uh, to pick up uh, one or other topic, uh, we can have a deeper discussion. You can contact me and uh, we will see what uh, can be done in this case. So let me start now saying that uh, so presentation doesn't work again, Isn't, didn't work. So now, now looks, looks okay. Okay, uh, we are speaking about um, accelerator, accelerators, uh, photon sciences um, that are based on uh, accelerators. And uh, these are very expensive uh, projects. That's why support uh, by uh, politicians is um, uh, very important here. And you see in Germany, uh, we have a uh, very strong support. Uh, you see a former chancellor of uh, Germany and a present chancellor. They are at uh, our facility. They strongly support us. So then our facility was uh, inaugurated uh, recently. It happened only in September 2017. And you see here a crowd of uh, people who came here uh, to celebrate with us. Not everybody was able uh, to come into experimental hall. Only a couple of people. And uh, you see, while others, uh, they are on the top, these uh, mi ministers of different European countries, uh, they are in experimental hall, and uh, they make an opening and an inauguration of uh, our facility. So you see then uh, visits of uh, instruments. Uh, you see here, uh, President uh, Chancellor of uh, Germany, he is in our experimental hatch. He is discussing with one of uh, our leading scientists, and I will address experiments that can be done at a particular this uh, uh, instrument. Many of you, uh, I believe, uh, knows what does it mean uh, synchrotrons, but probably not that many. What does it mean uh, free electron uh, lasers? That's why I would uh, start uh, my introduction uh, with uh, saying to you that uh, what uh, you see here, this is a second generation uh, synchrotron. Here uh, you see electron bunches that goes uh, here on this kind of uh, trajectory. These are bunches. And each time then bunch uh, crosses a place uh, where trajectory is bent, the light is coming uh, out. This is a pulse. You can have here pulses of uh, light. The problem of uh, second generation synchrotrons uh, that the uh, intensity of this light is not that high. Also, that the uh, size of uh, bunches is rather large. Uh, this is uh, because if you use this kind of accelerators, you cannot make a really very small bunches. So it means uh, that the duration of uh, photon uh, pulses is also not that short. Here, duration of uh, pulses uh, between 10 picoseconds and 100 picoseconds uh, can be achieved. And uh, this defines uh, time resolution of uh, possible experiments. Also, radiation uh, coming from synchrotrons uh, is uh, not coherent. Only a percent uh, of our coherency is uh, present in uh, radiation. Next thing, what was done? Second, third generation uh, synchrotrons, uh, they were built. Where uh, you see here in certain devices, uh, they are called uh, undulators. Where many more places uh, where electrons uh, go on a bent trajectory with acceleration are present. So it means in this case, if uh, you can see the undulators, uh, then you have uh, more uh, intensity in the uh, photon pulses. But still, the trajectory is uh, the same. That's why sizes uh, of bunches and pulse duration uh, is uh, not shorter than uh, 10 uh, picoseconds. And also coherence is not uh, present here. If uh, you would like to have uh, coherent radiation, then you need to have undulators much longer than uh, what you can have uh, here and the letters here, they are probably three meters long, uh, maybe five meters long. But in the case of uh, free electron lasers, uh, they are 100, 150 meters long. Also, if uh, you would like to have uh, really short pulses, you need to have a linear accelerator. So that's why we can go from uh, synchrotrons to what, uh, towards uh, free electron lasers by making longer undulators and changing uh, synchrotron by linear accelerator. So XL, this is a synchrotron with the very long uh, uh, undulators where acceleration is done by linear accelerator. And uh, differences, very important differences uh, between uh, 
radiation, what you can uh, get uh, from X cells and uh, synchrotrons, uh, they are shown here. What you see here, these are two pulses. One pulse, blue one. This is what comes uh, from synchrotron. Uh, you see here, duration is uh, about uh, 100 uh, picoseconds. And uh, what you can have, 10 to 9 photons uh, per pulse. What you see here, rot color, this is a not glitch. This is a pulse that comes from a free electron loop. Duration here is uh, 200, uh, two, uh, or between 200 and uh, femtoseconds. Recently, we were able to show that uh, also attoseconds pulses can be achieved uh, at the uh, European XL. So you see differences. Here we are speaking about femtoseconds or even uh, attoseconds. A number of photons here, 10 to 13 per pulse, instead of 10 to 9 per pulse in the case of uh, synchrotrons. Very many photons in a very short uh, pulse. And because of uh, linear accelerator, we are able to get a very small uh, electron uh, bunch. So that uh, our source is uh, point-like. If uh, you have a photon source, source that is uh, point-like, then you can focus the source into a sample. And you can study very small sample. And this uh, was used uh, uh, for example, in uh, this kind of uh, experiments. I will address the first uh, Nobel Prize uh, that were given to uh, this uh, free uh, scientist. And they were able uh, to decode the structure of uh, a ribosome. Interesting to say that 20 years of uh, really heroic efforts, they spent on crystallization of uh, a ribosome. This is uh, because you don't have enough photons uh, per pulse in the case of synchrotrons to be able to get a uh, good statistics uh, to, de to decode the structure from single molecule. You need to place the molecules in equivalent positions in the crystal, then you have uh, enough uh, possibility, enough statistics. But uh, there are a lot of uh, biological samples, uh, molecules uh, that uh, you simply not able to uh, crystallize and their structure is uh, not known. In the case of XFELs, uh, there are so many uh, really photons uh, per pulse that having one pulse that hits uh, one molecule and you have already structure of a uh, very large uh, objects. You see here dimensions. Uh, this is a dimension of a uh, protein, just a point, but then some viruses, even such a huge uh, viruses like Mimi uh, virus. You can get structure of uh, this uh, biomolecules by irradiation of just single molecule by uh, one pulse. Second thing uh, that is uh, not uh, possible with uh, synchrotrons, this is a study with ultra high time resolution. I say that uh, in a case of uh, synchrotrons, time resolution uh, is not better than 10 picoseconds. In our case, uh, we can go down to uh, a couple of uh, femtoseconds uh, presently, but uh, we are aiming at uh, going to attosecond uh, resolution. If you are with the picoseconds, uh, then uh, you are here. You can study, for example, phonon uh, propagation, but uh, you will be never able uh, to study quantum kinetics, uh, uh, behavior of um, electrons, uh, electron uh, excitation, and so on. If uh, you would like to have uh, this possibility, then you should go to X-ray uh, free electron lasers. In the same way as in 1892, a really social revolution was made by Edward Mybridge because he invented the movie the cinema. We are able now to make a molecular movie by taking a snapshots of how molecules behave. We can see how they move itself. This uh, kind of experiments with the time resolution are usually organized uh, like this. Uh, we have uh, a trigger, for example, optical laser, pump, so-called pump, and uh, uh, we have uh, a possibility to prop uh, what uh, happened after excitation with the pump uh, with so-called uh, prop uh, pulses. So you see here two sources. One source, uh, uh, this is the optical, optical laser excites sample, and uh, then X-ray laser Prop sample. Different kinds of experiments uh, can be done here. One can study relaxation of uh, an excitation of electron, electron structure. 
one can study also uh, changes uh, in a, a real uh, structure, depending on the experiment uh, you would like. This was uh, recognized uh, by a community and uh, several, not that many uh, synchrotrons, but um, several uh, X-ray lasers that uh, they were built and uh, they are already in operation. In uh, uh, Europe, uh, you see a uh, first laser, uh, this is a flash in uh, Hamburg. Uh, then uh, European XL, uh, also in Hamburg. Swiss cell, uh, then in Italy, uh, Fermi in the USA. Very interesting new project, LCLS uh, now is un under construction. Uh, and then uh, in, uh, in China, China is uh, very active now in the uh, building of uh, uh, free electron uh, lasers. They will, they are building now several of them. Uh, and then uh, South, uh, South, uh, South Korea also. <clears throat> and in the case of uh, uh, your country, uh, there is also a project. Uh, this is a project uh, Tarla I mentioned. This project was uh, first uh, under the umbrella of Ankara University, uh, but uh, now I think uh, something like a couple of years ago, Turkish Accelerator Center was, uh, was built and it got uh, independent from university status like National Centrum. There are some delays in the construction of uh, this uh, facility, but uh, we are in a contact uh, uh, with the management of um, uh, Tarla. Tarla is a member of uh, cooperation, uh, um, films of uh, Europe uh, cooperation, and uh, we are in a discussion. And we hope very much uh, that soon Tarla will come into, uh, into operation and uh, you will be able to perform experiments there with the infrared uh, light. But if you light uh, X, uh, X uh, rays, uh, then uh, you should go to other facilities. So then a few words, uh, now how free electron uh, lasers are built and uh, how they uh, operate. Important uh, part, uh, this is an injector, where uh, one can use the photocathodes like, uh, for example, cesium-2 tellur, where uh, photoelectrons are excited uh, by optical laser. And then a bunch of uh, electrons uh, come out of an uh, electron gun and uh, uh, come into uh, inject accelerator where these bunches that uh, they are initially accelerated and they are formed in order to have a really a small size. Then they come to uh, accelerate itself, to accelerate the models. There are different types of uh, cavities that can be used in a linear accelerator. In the case of uh, Hamburg Excels, uh, we have a very advanced technology where superconducting uh, cavities uh, are used. In a difference uh, to uh, warm uh, uh, linear Linux uh, at um, other facilities. And the advantage here is that uh, we have enough uh, power to, uh, to produce uh, about 30,000 pulses uh, per second in comparison to warm uh, Linux uh, where only something like 100 pulses per second uh, can be generated. And it makes um, a really huge difference uh, for some experiments. And then after the accelerator electron bunches, uh, they uh, come uh, to a um, photon generator, uh, two undulators. This is a very long undulator. I told, uh, I told you that it is important to have um, a really long undulator because what happened in a undulator electron bunch, uh, this is the initial electron bunch uh, with the electrons uh, that are randomly distributed uh, here. But then upon penetration of the uh, undulator, something happened inside of the bunch because of um, interaction of uh, electrons in a bunch with the radiation, uh, with their own radiation, this uh, kind of stripes are formed. They become uh, more and more pronounced. And please uh, pay attention that uh, these are not different uh, electron bunches. This is uh, one bunch with a microstructure. And this uh, microstructure, one can uh, have it only if undulator is long and only if uh, bunches, uh, they are short enough. Why it is important to have uh, these uh, stripes? In the case of uh, randomly distributed electrons, uh, each electron irradiates light, but incoherently. But in the case of uh, stripes, particularly at the wavelength uh, that uh, is equal to uh, distance between neighboring stripes, there is a radiation and there is a positive interference. There is a strong, huge enhancement of uh, radiation at a particular uh, uh, photon energy that uh, can be produced by free electron lasers. That's why in the case of uh, free electron lasers, number per number of photons uh, per uh, pulse is much higher. Orders of magnitude um, is higher than in the case of uh, uh, synchrotron. So uh, 
this, uh, but this kind of uh, devices, they are uh, really expensive. And in principle, if uh, you would like to have um, a very best uh, facility, then only cooperation between different uh, countries can uh, make it a um, reality. In the case of uh, European Excel, uh, we have uh, uh, very many uh, members. One, uh, one should emphasize that recently, uh, the UK uh, uh, also joined our facility. This is an opposite uh, direction as compared to um, Brexit. And uh, this uh, facility, uh, the price of this uh, facility is uh, 1.2 milliard uh, euros uh, in a prices uh, 2005. So it means uh, that uh, with accounting for inflation now, this uh, could uh, cost uh, something like one and a half milliard uh, euros. Our operation budget uh, presently uh, is, it was in 2018, million euros. Now we came up to 140 million euros. So this is a really, facility that can be afforded only by cooperation of different countries. But it doesn't mean that only groups from these countries are allowed to have a beam time here. Our facility is open to international. Scientists from any country can apply and they can get a beam time, beam time at our facility. I will address this point at the end of my presentation again. So, and then uh, this is our facility. Yeah, the whole facility is underground. It starts here in Hamburg, uh, and uh, it goes uh, 3.5 kilometers uh, towards the state in Germany, uh, Schleswig Holstein. It uh, consists of uh, injector that is at the daisy side. Then uh, uh, this is an accelerator module. Accelerator is 1.8 uh, uh, kilometers long, accelerating electrons uh, up to energy 17.5 giga electron volts. Then Electrons, so they come into uh, antilators uh, where the light uh, is uh, uh, produced. And uh, here we have uh, experimental station. This is uh, how accelerator looks like. A huge, uh, very long uh, tunnel uh, with accelerator uh, module. There are liquid uh, helium uh, cooled. Very technologically, a uh, very uh, complex uh, uh, situation. Then these are antilators. Uh, they consist of uh, different sections uh, Sections, they're about uh, five meters uh, long, and uh, they are placed in a sequence in order to have uh, and then uh, about um, 100 uh, meters uh, on the leaders. These are beam lines uh, that uh, come up uh, on the leaders. They again are uh, very long, uh, almost uh, uh, one uh, kilometer long, uh, with a lot of uh, optical elements uh, that are placed here and uh, uh, diagnosed. Let me uh, address now science, what uh, we are doing. At, uh, at Excel. We have uh, five uh, tunnels uh, here actually. Until now, we were able to fill uh, with equipment uh, only three tunnels with the uh, two experimental st stations um, at the each, each uh, tunnel. These tunnels, uh, they are shown uh, by um, yellow color. We have uh, two still uh, free uh, tunnels where we are discussing now which kind of equipment should be placed and uh, which kind of experiment uh, we would like to, uh, to have. Have there. We have uh, two undulators, uh, two beam lines uh, that are hard X ray. Uh, this is this one, and this is uh, this one. Hard X rays, uh, it means uh, that uh, um, photon energy between uh, sounds like uh, four kilo, sounds like a, uh, between three kilo electron volt uh, and the 24, 24 uh, kilo electron volt. And we have uh, one soft X-ray uh, beam line with the photon energies uh, between uh, 270 electron volts and uh, three kilo electron volts. This is a range of photon energies uh, we can uh, we can achieve, starting from photon energy that is uh, immediately below carbon age to 270, going up to uh, 24 kilo electron volts. Uh, that is, if uh, you recalculate this into wavelength, so then uh, this is a half an ounce. You can understand uh, which kind of uh, special resolution that we can have there. So let me start uh, first uh, with the two hard X-ray stations. Uh, this uh, FXC and uh, FPB. FXC, FXC, it means uh, 10 per second X-ray experiments. Each uh, of uh, our stations, uh, they are constructed in a way that we have an uh, interaction point. And exactly here, you can see, you can see in the German Chancellor staying and hearing about our experiment. 
And uh, we have uh, here some uh, focusing and the uh, diagnostic uh, elements. Here, at this uh, instrument uh, that operates in the range between 3 kiloelectron volt and uh, 24 kiloelectron volt, we can uh, perform uh, studies uh, with a liquid. In experiments uh, where uh, we have a liquid jet injecting samples, and uh, we have a, uh, we have a, uh, a free electron uh, laser uh, with a pulse. And then we can take uh, pictures. We can take uh, pictures uh, with a very high repetition rate. There is 4.5 megahertz repetition rate, and uh, with a very high uh, time resolution uh, that is uh, about uh, 10 femtoseconds. What is uh, interesting that here, simultaneously, we can, uh, but uh, by the way, here we can study also solid samples, structure of a solid sample with the same uh, equipment, uh, but without liquid jet. But if uh, you would like to characterize system fully, then uh, you need to know not only where different atoms are located, but also where electrons, uh, how electrons are moving uh, between atoms. That's why you need to study also the electronic structure. That's why you need uh, to have here also possibilities uh, to study uh, spectroscopic, to, to perform spectroscopic research. So here are some spectrometers, uh, they are placed here. This interaction point, this is a detector where this kind of pictures are taken. And this is another detector where uh, electronic structure is uh, studied. So to give um, you an example how this uh, can be done simultaneously in uh, one experiment, uh, our users, they studied uh, iron uh, BP, uh, BPY. And what uh, you see here, this is a different uh, spectra. If uh, that were taken up on measurements of uh, K-beta spectra of, uh, of um, iron with a time resolution. This is a how situation uh, develops uh, after excitation of, uh, uh, of a system. So first nothing, then excitation, then you see here differences, uh, then it relaxes. Once you say here, if uh, intensity of uh, this signal is uh, plotted here against uh, time, then uh, one see here that uh, everything happened uh, within the about two picoseconds. Electronic structure relaxes uh, within the two picoseconds uh, time duration. In the same time, also, uh, real structure was measured uh, with a detector, and uh, this is scattering, uh, scattering feature. If now intensity here will be integrated asymptotically, then uh, one gets uh, this kind of uh, system, signal. And uh, this, uh, this kind of system signal is after six uh, picosecond uh, after excitation. This is uh, after 100 picosecond excitation. And one sees uh, that uh, here still a lot of um, changes uh, are observed after two picoseconds. So the system uh, relaxes uh, in two ways, in two stages. First, the relaxation of the electronic structure. This is very quick because the electrons, uh, they are small and uh, they are fast. This is two picoseconds, and then hundreds of uh, picoseconds, uh, this is a relaxation of um, the real structure. Then uh, one of the um, real uh, experiments, um, this is a study of uh, catalytic material. The huge task of um, our economies, uh, this is so-called uh, green economy or hydrogen economy, and it is important uh, to uh, develop and understand the working of uh, uh, Catalysts uh, that uh, can uh, produce uh, uh, hydrogen out of a uh, hydrogen atom. This uh, can be done uh, with a uh, uh, catalytic uh, material, but in many cases, uh, this uh, catalytic uh, material needs to be first uh, excited uh, uh, with, uh, with electrons. That's why systems, uh, they uh, uh, very often uh, consist of uh, a photosynthesizer, which uh, takes light. Then what happens, uh, electron charge transfer into catalytic material, and then catalytic uh, reaction uh, happens. If uh, now uh, this uh, picture can be transformed uh, to a real structure, then uh, you see here, uh, this is a catalyst. This is a uh, photosynthesizer. Electrons uh, from uh, iron, here in the middle, uh, one see iron and here cobalt, comes uh, through a link, a bridge uh, into cobalt, and then catalyst is activated and the reaction uh, can, be, uh, can be obtained. And this uh, can be seen in a real time, this uh, charge excitation and charge transfer. By uh, looking uh, for electronic structure, for emission spectra, iron uh, ka alpha and the cobalt uh, ka alpha. Again, uh, this is uh, a different uh, spectra, and this is the intensity of the uh, different uh, spectra. Uh, this is a signal coming from uh, iron, and this is, a, this is a from uh, cobalt. One see here that uh, changes, they happen uh, simultaneously. So 
it means that electrons uh, comes uh, from uh, iron and uh, uh, appears uh, really at the position of uh, cobalt. So now uh, this is the second uh, station. Uh, this is a so-called uh, single particle biological uh, uh, instrument where single biomolecules uh, can be studied. I told you that uh, in our case, uh, what is possible uh, to have uh, just uh, one heater of, uh, from uh, one pulse to one uh, biomolecules and the structure is in there. And here again, uh, there is a focusing elements and uh, uh, this, uh, this interaction point uh, where detector is uh, placed. Experiment is uh, constructed in a way that uh, here again, a jet that uh, injected uh, biological samples into interaction point uh, is present and the light are coming from uh, uh, X-field. Each time when uh, they uh, meet each other, one, one gets a two-dimensional uh, structure. Many, many two-dimensional structures uh, should be taken uh, because molecules, so they can have a different orientation. That's why if you would like to have a three-dimensional structure, you need to have uh, up, to, up to a million uh, images, individual uh, two-dimensional uh, images. And then uh, you should uh, make a correlation analysis and get a three-dimensional structure. But uh, this is not a problem. Uh, we have uh, special support groups uh, that uh, provide uh, provide users uh, with uh, uh, this kind of so software. This uh, can be done. And then based on uh, this uh, numerous number of two-dimensional uh, images, the three-dimensional image uh, in a reciprocal space uh, can be uh, seen. That can be converted then into a real structure. So this, uh, this is a real experiment. Uh, this experiment was done, COVID-related experiment. Uh, this is a part of uh, virus. Part of virus, uh, this part uh, is a dangerous part. This part is, uh, that is responsible for breaking of uh, our proteins. This part is uh, not dangerous because it's, uh, it is present also in other uh, viruses. This part uh, was not uh, understood uh, by, uh, uh, by chemists, uh, by biologists, because it doesn't uh, directly affect uh, proteins, uh, but it is present only in a COVID uh, virus. What other people did, uh, they uh, uh, integrated here some uh, ligands uh, into dangerous part that they assume prevent this dangerous part of uh, cutting of uh, our protein. They did this and they asked us, uh, could you please uh, see if uh, really these ligands uh, they are placed where we expect uh, to happen. These experiments were done, they were successful. This is uh, one of uh, uh, two dimensional pictures uh, that were taken uh, once more again, uh, up to millions of uh, two dimensional pictures uh, they were taken, uh, then uh, they were uh, analyzed. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, we have seen uh, here these uh, ligands and also ligands uh, that uh, were placed here in order to see that it might happen that because of correlation between this part and this dangerous part, uh, properties of dangerous part uh, can be, uh, uh, can be get out. So then uh, also time resolved experiments uh, can be uh, performed at uh, this uh, experiment. For example, uh, you have a uh, biological stuff and uh, you have a ligand. And you have uh, here jets, special jets uh, where a mixing of ligands and uh, proteins uh, can be obtained. In the case uh, of uh, no ligand is uh, present, uh, you see that uh, what comes out uh, from uh, liquid jet uh, has uh, the same color, this is uh, a protein color. In a case of mixing, uh, you see that the color is present only here, but then it disappears. It means that the reaction uh, is there. And this can be studied uh, if uh, a beam uh, hits a uh, jet at different uh, uh, distances uh, from the jet. So then uh, with the time resolution also, it was uh, possible to see how ligands uh, are attached uh, to uh, protein. On the basis of uh, these uh, measurements, uh, the maps uh, of charge density maps, uh, they were done at uh, different uh, times. Unfortunately, you, don't, you cannot see it here, but uh, there are two different, uh, two different uh, maps. And uh, one see here differences, particularly here in this, in this range, uh, one see how ligands, uh, they come and uh, attached to, uh, to protein. Good, now uh, soft X-rays. Uh, we have uh, here two, uh, two instruments, one dealing uh, with the solid states and the one dealing uh, with the uh, atoms, uh, molecules, and uh, clusters. These are soft X-rays, energies here between 270 electron volt and uh, three uh, kilo electron volt. Here, main emphasis is given to uh, electronic structure study. This is an instrument uh, 
uh, SCS, uh, spectroscopy and the coherent scattering instruments, where very fancy quantum materials, uh, superconductors uh, are uh, studied. What you see here, uh, this is an investigation of a formation and the movement of uh, uh, fermions. Fermions, uh, uh, these are quasi particles uh, where spins of uh, atoms, uh, electrons, uh, they are uh, uh, uh, they in, uh, in uh, one direction. They are uh, of uh, high importance because uh, in this case, uh, one can uh, use uh, them uh, in uh, computers uh, uh, as a bit. Advantage here is uh, that uh, once they are moved, they are very stable and uh, they can uh, move uh, with not a uh, large uh, energy because uh, energy is uh, really uh, very much required uh, for operation of uh, computers. So this uh, was done uh, uh, then. Um, change of uh, magnetic structure of uh, bits uh, were also studied uh, by the penetration of uh, um, uh, soliton uh, waves. Here in this case, uh, Remagnetization uh, of uh, uh, bits uh, were, uh, were obtained. It means again uh, zero against uh, one in a, in a bit. Then uh, here, a formation of uh, domains. Uh, you see here these uh, scattering rings uh, that, that are uh, becoming uh, smaller and smaller. So it means uh, that the sizes of domains are becoming uh, larger. A lot of studies <coughs> of uh, magnetic phenomena, but also superconductors. Superconductors. Uh, was studied uh, with a resonance in elastic uh, X-ray uh, scattering in experiment uh, where superconducting state uh, was uh, first destroyed. And then the relaxation uh, was obtained uh, by uh, measurement of uh, the Higgs uh, spectra. Then AM um, or physics uh, uh, here, nonlinear phenomena because we have a lot of uh, photons and they uh, can excite a lot of electrons. Then the fragmentation of uh, molecules and uh, then structure of uh, clusters can be, uh, can be studied. One of um, the examples, uh, this is a simple um, example, uh, where um, single hole and double hole J excitation uh, were uh, absorbed. Double hole, it means that simultaneously with the two photons, uh, one can excite the two holes, and one uh, can see what uh, happens to these uh, holes uh, with the time. Uh, then the fragmentation of uh, oxygen molecule, uh, these are two oxygen molecules. One can see how this, uh, in, uh, atoms uh, from oxygen they go in a different direction and simultaneously one can measure uh, electronic change of electronic uh, structure upon uh, this uh, this motion fragmentation of uh, other molecule uh, then uh, i would like to show also fancy study of uh, helium uh, droplets uh, with a uh, that were adopted by uh, different uh, materials uh, by silver they have uh, different uh, directions again that they, this can be measured uh, with the three electron lasers and the structure inside that can be also measured uh, vortexes. These uh, uh, kind of uh, systems are considered uh, to be applied in the uh, quantum computers. Photo, uh, photo electron uh, spectroscopy uh, can be also used uh, way electronic structure again of uh, quantum materials uh, that can be, uh, can be used uh, with very high efficiency. Having information about uh, uh, impulse directions uh, about electrons and uh, spins in a quantum materials, uh, solar cells, uh, today solar cells uh, were also mentioned. So in this um, case, uh, uh, one can uh, consider the solar cell um, interface uh, between material where excitons uh, are first uh, excited, then they go into an interface uh, with the C60, and here charge uh, separation uh, happens, and charge separations uh, can be seen in a shift of uh, photo, uh, photo electron spectra. Then the two last uh, instruments, uh, uh, that are again hard X-ray instruments where amorphous uh, materials are studied, phase transitions in the amorphous uh, materials. It is a bit more easy to study phase transition in the solid materials, but in uh, amorphous and the liquids, uh, this is a difficult. But this uh, can be done here with a uh, photon uh, correlation uh, spectroscopy. Uh, here, phase uh, transition, you see here liquid jets uh, uh, with a liquid to solid and the transition. Uh, you see here uh, this. Uh, points uh, where uh, photon uh, beam hits a uh, uh, uh, jet and uh, it looks different uh, after uh, transition. Just in a couple of words, uh, for the first time, interaction between light uh, and uh, nuclear, nuclear magnetic resonance uh, were studied. Here is a magnetic scattering of light uh, on uh, uh, magnetic uh, uh, nuclear for investigation. And 
Then uh, there was the instrument uh, where uh, materials under um, extreme conditions uh, can be uh, studied. Up, uh, upon uh, they have pressure, uh, magnetic uh, field. And uh, this, uh, this relates a bit uh, to a presentation uh, today during opening uh, ceremony. Propagation of shock waves uh, can be investigated. Uh, shock waves uh, can be made uh, by uh, very powerful optical lasers. You see here front of uh, waves. Uh, depending on time, and uh, you can see how these shock waves penetrate uh, through, uh, through materials. Seismic uh, waves uh, can be also studied uh, because we have a special device uh, uh, where um, pressure can be modulated uh, with a frequency, a seismic uh, frequency. And uh, then, uh, uh, this is my last slide. Uh, this is a, one can uh, really see what happens uh, inside of uh, our planet. Uh, iron is um, uh, very important uh, that uh, makes a magnetic uh, field that protects uh, our life uh, here. But uh, which um, condition iron has uh, inside of uh, our uh, planet? It's by far not clear because of uh, huge uh, pressures. And these uh, huge pressures, <coughs> they can be modulated uh, at uh, our instrument. And then the one can see a transition uh, from uh, liquid uh, alpha iron into epsilon uh, iron by measurements of uh, diffraction patterns. So this is uh, all uh, what I uh, uh, wanted to say. And please, uh, once more again, uh, it, it is really difficult to understand uh, all of what I uh, told you. And also in my case, I don't understand uh, in all details uh, what uh, I'm talking about. Please uh, do not worry. If uh, you would like, and if uh, you picked up uh, a topic that uh, would be of interest to you, then contact me. We can uh, further discuss. We can further discuss if we speak about uh, young scientists. Uh, we are interested about uh, bilateral scientific uh, projects, uh, uh, including uh, PhD students. Uh, we can have joint PhD students uh, between uh, Turkish University and, uh, and um, European Excel. We are also uh, very much welcome um, all scientists uh, to submit scientific proposals. We have uh, tools uh, to help you to overcome uh, some initial barriers, how to write proposals. And also we are able to uh, invite uh, you to participate in uh, community proposals uh, that are led by experienced groups. We have condi condition for our experience group that if you would like to get a beam time at our facility, you please invite uh, new user uh, groups. In this case, uh, probability that uh, you will get beam time is uh, high and uh, they are very much happy and uh, they will invite you if uh, you are interested in any of these uh, topics uh, I, uh, I talked today. And also bilateral instrument development, uh, if uh, possible, can be uh, also uh, considered. Thank you very much uh, for your attention, that's all. for the comprehensive talk and introducing us to essentials of XFEL and current status. Any questions or comments in Zoom first, if there are any. I guess not. Any questions, comments in the room? Turkish scientists to participate in this one. Uh, my question is the following. Yevre uh, XFL is the sole uh, XFL based on superconducting technology or not? Sorry, I is it the sole? So are there other uh, XFLs which use superconducting acceleration? Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, flash. Now, uh, this is a top uh, this is And now. XFL. And now the project in, uh, in America, LCLS-2, oh, they, uh, they will use uh, uh, superconducting uh, uh, models mm -hmm. and uh, they will, will be able uh, to uh, provide even more than 30,000 uh, pulses per second, oh. more than European XL, uh, but uh, it will come in uh, maybe one year from today, maybe in a couple of years from today. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have, uh, we are thinking about uh, further steps. Uh, so we, is there, we have, is they change in all accelerator structure? Uh, they built a new accelerator. Okay. Um, uh, Mike, please, because we have online participants. Oh. How far down into the arrow second range can you go with the, your XFEL and what is the physical limit for the duration? 
we uh, made the first experiment. Uh, this was in June uh, this year, and uh, we have evidences uh, that uh, we are a bit uh, below one uh, femtosecond. second. Still, uh, the data, they uh, should be uh, evaluated. Um, the point is uh, that it's uh, really very difficult uh, to make diagnostics of uh, other seconds. But uh, we are sure that uh, we are below femtoseconds. seconds. We believe uh, that uh, we will be able uh, to go down to and then to something like 200 um, other seconds, maybe 100 other seconds using the uh, present uh, te uh, technologies. But uh, who knows what will come in the future. Any further questions, comments? Yes, not the case. So we thank Sergey once again uh, for coming to the boardroom and delivering this speech on XFEL. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm, I'm here this, uh, today. Uh, this uh, come to me and also the reception. Uh, we can have discussion. Great. Thanks. Uh, in between, I'd like to make an announcement for the poster sessions in Turkish. Posterleri olan arkadaşlarımızın saat Dört buçuk, dört buçuktan önce Mümtaz Göztepe salonuna e, posterlerini yerleştirmek üzere e, gitmelerini rica ediyoruz. Çünkü oturumlardan sonra poster sunumları başlayacak. Dört buçuktan önce herkesin posterlerini hazırlamış, asmış olması gerekiyor. Now we continue with the second invited speaker of uh, this afternoon's session. And we have Erkcan Özcan. He is going to uh, give a talk on Tanmak, actually, where he is now affiliated on duty. So he will talk about Tanmak from a scholar physicist's perspective. So, Akcan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, let me see if I can use this. Give me a second. Ah. Um, well, at least I can. Ah, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is a, uh, going to be a rather um, unfamiliar talk for me. I'm going to cover um, uh, new grounds as far as I'm concerned. It's like a, a some mix of uh, a talk. It's not a physics talk. It's not a, um, a scientist talk. It's not an administrator's talk. It is everything and uh, none. Um, so this is why I call this a scholar physicist perfect perspective. Someone who has done um, most of, uh, spent most of his time in classrooms, in lecture rooms, in the laboratory, and uh, who has moved to um, uh, do some uh, rather interesting administrative work as well recently. So uh, I'd like to share um, my experiences with you. Moreover, ah, I should also add one more thing. Um, uh, the president of uh, the Tanmak, this new um, funding agency in Turkey, um, was supposed to be here um, in the morning. You saw uh, he was going to get uh, an award. And uh, he wanted to send his uh, best greetings to everybody. And he said uh, he is uh, sorry he is not here. Uh, this um, uh, last minute arrangement also modified the contents of my talk. So this is now uh, a, a essentially a quark gluon plasma as far as I'm concerned, as far as the talk goes. OK, so um, let's see if we can just move to the next page. No. Nope. So how does it work? We need to point it in some direction. Ah. Okay, so um, 
um, uh, the, the way I describe this is that this talk is an is an essay. It's not an article. It's something that I'm uh, familiar with writing. And uh, I'll be wearing multiple hats throughout this talk uh, as a functionary of Ten Mat uh, as an academic of Boaziz University, and a physicist who has been asked to talk physics. Okay. And um, uh, given that we have uh, a rather distinguished audience uh, uh, with people from all around the world, as well as um, young people, students who are starting with their careers, um, this also makes this sort of talk rather difficult because um, the audience is so broad. So there will be two parts. Uh, part one is um, going to be a brief introduction to Tenmak, um, in particular uh, Nuken. And um, this will be presented with one hat. You will see that the slides for that are going to be even different colored. Okay, so they're official, if you like, Tenmak slides. And then part two is um, uh, a, a bit of a soul searching and some ideas about uh, how the community uh, can engage with funding agencies and uh, do uh, better things together. So um, uh, for those of the audience who are unfamiliar with uh, Tenmak, um, here is a bit of history. Uh, 1956 is uh, the foundation of the Atomic Energy Commission in Turkey. This is um, the, we, are, we, we were the first country to effectively sign the um, well sign on to the Atoms for Force Peace Program, um, and um, in '62. Um, at Chekmeje, uh, we have um, a, a nuclear research center um, uh, founded. Uh, this is um, um, uh, this is also the year when the uh, Chekmeje research uh, um, reactor uh, became um, critical for the first time. And uh, then um, a, a separate campus in the city of Ankara is established in '67. Um, these, um, well, start to roll in 82, we have Turkish Atomic Energy Authority established, uh, taking also the uh, functions of the commission to some extent. And uh, in 2003, uh, one of the components of, uh, one of the future co uh, components of Tenmak Boran, National Boron Research Institute is established. Um, 15 years later, we get uh, Rare Earth Minerals Research Institute. And uh, right after that, uh, Boran, uh, Atomic Energy Authority, and Natan, uh, they just uh, get combined, and um, a, a new entity, Tenmak, is uh, is born. And uh, Tenmak is essentially uh, responsible for doing all kinds of research that is under the uh, purveyance of uh, the Energy uh, Department of Energy, Ministry of Energy and uh, Natural Resources. So um, this Tenmak entity, um, how we would define it, uh, it has currently five uh, separate institutions um, and all are doing well, uh, contributing to some sort of R&D activities. Uh, these include developing strategy, uh, carrying out the research itself, funding research um, and uh, facilitating uh, all kinds of activities like this. Now, uh, this is, these sort of things you expect from any R&D uh, agency overall, but uh, uh, this um, Tenmak actually sees itself uh, through other, um, uh, how to say, glasses as well. Uh, first of all, we see ourselves as, the, uh, as uh, an entity that runs and funds uh, big science experiments, uh, accelerators, research reactors, and um, uh, activities at CERN and, uh, and, and Sesame, for instance. Uh, we are responsible for radioactive waste management, uh, either from the upcoming uh, nuclear power plants uh, or from medicinal or radi various radiological uses. Uh, th those are under uh, our jurisdiction. Uh, we are uh, a technical support organization for many entities in the Turkish government, uh, of course, mainly to the nuclear regulatory agency, uh, NEDECA, uh, but also to uh, security forces, forensics, customs, all kinds of cultural heritage, uh, Ministry of Culture, um, various imports, exports are um, somehow uh, related to what we do. Uh, for instance, the way we um, validate uh, samples, whether um, well, 
um, whether this means um, a certain limit on radiological content or um, irradiation to sterilize uh, items. Uh, so we are this sort of uh, technical supporters. And finally, we are um, uh, the, the head of radiological meteorology as far as uh, the, um, well, we, we are the head of meteorology in Turkey as far as radiological measurements are, are concerned. So as you know, TÜBİTAK has a, a National Meteorology Institute. Uh, we are a designated institute uh, for anything that really rela relates to nuclear and radiological measurements. Overall, there is more than 800 personnel and about 60%, uh, a little bit more than 60% of this is at NUCAN. Um, the Institute has, uh, well, the, the, the entity has two uh, major campuses. Uh, this is the Ankara Sarayköy campus and this is the Istanbul Çekmece campus. And um, uh, Sarayköy campus uh, main uh, research is related to accelerators, irradiation and detector technologies. And uh, the Çekmece campus is more uh, related to nuclear reactors, fuels, uh, waste uh, management, etc. Uh, this, the other uh, small institute, smaller institute, Boren and Temen, and um, uh, their uh, and the administrative campus of Temmak are located closer to the Ankara city center. But there are plans to um, uh, bring all the five uh, institutes under uh, one location at the Sarayköy campus over in Ankara. Um, I'll just give you uh, a few examples of the things that we do. Um, um, for instance, at uh, the Ankara campus, uh, we have um, the secondary standard dosimetry lab. We have actually two labs, plus one also in Czechmeja as well. Uh, this one um, I, I picked as an example uh, because um, it is, um, well, the largest of its kind in the region, um, possibly in Europe as well. Um, uh, gamma calibration systems, XA calibration systems, um, various irradiation tests, beta calibrations, neutron calibrations can be done here. Uh, this is important as um, uh, Turkey moves to um, uh, getting nuclear power and um, all kinds of devices will need to be calibrated here. Uh, we have an electron accelerator facility at the uh, same campus. Uh, this is um, uh, for particular application um, of uh, treatment um, of waste, flue gas, wastewater, etc., um, for the Turkish in the, for the use of Turkish industry. Uh, we have a proton accelerator facility. This is the largest of its kind in Turkey. It is um, rather modest by uh, maybe European standards, but um, uh, in the region Balkans and um, uh, Caucasus and the Middle East, it is the largest of its kind. A 30 MeV. Uh, 1.2 milliampere uh, proton cyclotron. Uh, it has been um, established uh, to produce um, um, gas, liquid, or solid target uh, radioisotopes. Um, there is also an in house uh, generator and uh, production uh, project uh, for uh, gallium 68. I'll talk a little bit about this later on. And uh, there is a, a separate R&D beam line, um, and um, uh, one, of one of the Turkish universities, Middle East Technical University, has a, a defocusing beam line built there uh, for uh, applications um, of uh, tests of uh, well, test applications for space and other um, uh, circuit, etc. Um, there is also uh, an in-house uh, beam degrader. Um, project to uh, use the protons uh, for um, uh, various analyses. Um, this is um, uh, some photos from the, the sort of things uh, that are irradiated um, at this facility. And um, uh, a large number of projects are uh, conducted at these um, uh, centers. Um, here are some of the examples. Uh, uh, well, um, uh, boron 10 enrichment through chemical process, um, um, fusion reactors uh, to produce uh, neutrons, uh, radiation early warning system. This is, uh, well, I'm going to show some of these things. Uh, radiation monitoring at checkpoints and border gates, and all kinds of um, uh, nuclear agriculture. Um, uh, applications. This is just one example, mutation of 
mutational breeding or implants. Uh, there are also all these services that we provide to the uh, society. Uh, well, metrology, dosimeter services, biological dose determination, um, well, production and maintenance of um, various detection systems, uh, irradiation of spices, medical equipment, sterilization, etc. cetera, um, uh, emergency preparedness, and um, of course, with uh, collaboration with the nuclear regulatory body in Turkey, uh, auditing of um, various um, uh, centers of uh, therapy and imaging devices. Uh, this is a project that uh, was um, done in collaboration with uh, Nanotam in Ankara. Uh, it's a photovoltaic battery. Uh, these batteries are uh, designed to run, um, uh, well, to have a lifetime of over 20, 25 years. Uh, the first prototype was successfully built in uh, 2018 using nickel uh, 63 betas as the source. And um, in whatever four years, um, uh, the performance was um, significantly improved, and now uh, we are able to um, use tritium as well as nickel. Um, this is uh, showing an example of the um, uh, material science capabilities at the Institute. Uh, next generation transparent ceramic scintillators, um, you, well, Guy, Gag, and Lyo. Um, uh, these are uh, polycrystalline um, structures, but as you can see, um, they were uh, successfully made transparent and um, uh, expected uh, number of photons per MeV is uh, rather competitive. Uh, the Institute has already uh, used these in various applications. This is a prototype of a handheld um, uh, uh, dose rate meter. Um, uh, well, you can see some of the specs here. And this is, um, well, uh, it's uh, Bluetooth uh, uh, connected um, um, well, uh, software that you can use. Uh, this sort of uh, this uh, detectors that we develop or um, scintillating metals we develop, we also put recently in some sort of uh, payload for a um, um, uh, for, for a to a drone, and um, this is meant uh, for applications, particularly in terms of um, emergency preparedness where, um, well, uh, by the way, the whole software and um, e almost everything except the uh, photomultiplier tubes have been uh, built uh, domestically and um, uh, including all the software and hardware. And uh, we, um, well, um, we have this sort of capability as well. Um, when, when we develop these things, it's not just uh, small one-time prototypes. Um, the Institute has the uh, capability to build and produce things um, over and over. Um, this is an example of that. Um, the, at um, three, over 300 stations all around Turkey, um, uh, devices built uh, by, uh, previously by Taek, now at, by Nuken, are uh, located. Uh, to watch um, any um, uh, well any radioactive activity uh, in the in the country, and uh, the data is also shared with the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, this is one of the other projects. Uh, this is so-called Sanem Project Prometheus. Uh, this was meant to be Turkey's first uh, radio frequency quadrupole. Uh, including its RF uh, pro, uh, power supply unit, transmission line, circulator, beam diagnosis system, cavities, and uh, well, bead pull system. There's a, a typo here, bead pull system. Essentially, uh, this is Turkey's uh, putting, um, uh, we are uh, Turkey dirtying its hands uh, in building um, a, a core part of a, a proton accelerators. Uh, accelerators, uh, it was able to um, accelerate uh, 20 keV um, uh, protons to up to 1.3 MeV, and uh, you can see various specs here. Um, nowadays, um, there's also an ongoing RFQ project um, based at Bozici, which is uh, shooting uh, to 800 megahertz. That is above uh, what CERN was able to uh, build a um, couple years ago. And uh, so combining, um, uh, well, Kahvelab uh, and uh, Nuken expertise, uh, we are looking forward to um, uh, getting, a, a, a, well, um, getting to design and build uh, the new RFQs for 
um, uh, CERN's medical uh, projects. Oops, this jumped quite a bit now. Okay, uh, so um, th this was just really like uh, some of the examples of what is done. And um, the, as, a, as a physicist, as an experimental particleist who was supposed to know about all of these things, it came to me as a surprise. As I came to the Institute, I realized that um, I had no idea about the breadth of research being done. Uh, I showed just very few examples. And um, um, I believe um, it has great potential, but it needs engagement from all sectors of physical sciences. Okay? Uh, it is also interesting that the society at large does not know what these institutions really do. Uh, people who uh, graduate from physics departments, uh, they don't really know how what we do is touching uh, all sectors of the society. Uh, so from the safety of the water uh, we drink to the food products that we consume to the medical supplies that are being uh, that we are being uh, treated with, um, all kinds of these things uh, functions are being done as well as all kinds of different research topics. Anyway, so this is, if you like, um, the advertisement, okay? So I'm done with the advertisement. I'd like to now move on to uh, part two, um, uh, a physicist per personal experience of um, how administrative work at an institution like this and a government institute uh, changes your perspective on how science uh, could and should be done. Uh, now, I say this is a personal view. Um, uh, so it might come as uh, some sort of uh, uh, meritai paper uh, to some of you who are experienced in, in managerial or administrative works. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Mrs. Meritai, uh, uh, she wrote a paper called A Mathematical Model for the Determination of Total Area Under Glucose Tolerance and Other Metabolic uh, Curves. Okay. Uh, and she reinvented the trapezoidal method that we learn in the first year of calculus, uh, even at the high school level. Okay, uh, here she wrote this paper, and if you look at uh, Google um, Scholar, this has already been write, cited almost 500 times. Okay, so something that everybody knows in one field, um, she didn't know, and she reinvented it, and uh, now uh, this is known as uh, the um, how do you say? This is known as the Thais formula in, um, in some medical sciences, okay? Um, so what I'm going to tell you now, I hope I won't come as talking about some Thais formula uh, to people who know it, but I hope that um, uh, like this Mrs. Thais uh, telling about things that should be known, I want to make it broad public uh, about uh, how uh, things run. As soon as I arrived at uh, Nuken, I charted my way the way a physicist does, okay? Uh, so the first thing I need to do was I, well, as a physicist, I needed to see the big or bigger picture, okay? So what is Tenmark? What is Nuken? Uh, how are these located within the, the strategy of the, uh, well, um, the, um, the administration? And, um, and how, what, what, what are their history? And uh, what, uh, what is the strategy uh, of where they're going, okay? Uh, and in order to see the big picture as a physicist, of course, you need to go back to the literature. So I did a lot of reading, okay? I read uh, all kinds of uh, articles and papers and uh, books uh, about various uh, funding agencies being uh, founded in the uh, past, how they evolved, where they came from, and how they uh, moved on. And this uh, literature reading was also quite uh, eye-opening to me, as I'll show you in a few minutes. Uh, you need to you need to be able to find connections. You need to see different parts of a picture, and you need to see a network of um, um, of them. Uh, you need to be open to discussion, uh, objection, and re-evaluation. Hearing objections and re-evaluation. This was one of the most difficult things to, done at a, a government institute because at a government institute, I found out that most people want only to hear what you say and uh, not uh, the so-called like the people who work with you. Okay, so there's a head and the head says the right thing and the others somehow abide to it. I, was, I, I had difficulty breaking this, but I think we have uh, managed quite well at uh, Nukan recently. And um, uh, next, um, you need a faculty to split complex looking problems into surmountable pieces. 
and you need the patients to go through each uh, while you are deferring gratification. Okay, so there is a big goal and you need to split into small pieces. And in a, the way we do in our labs, we need to go step by step. Okay. And finally, uh, you need a, a very strong self-restraint to, to start with and always fall back to the first principles. I, I'll try to show you these things. By the way, these are things that define me as a physicist. And uh, uh, to be honest, um, as, a, as a side note, I would like to ask the community, um, including physics educators as well as a general community, how do we cultivate these in all of our students and how do we communicate that these are the characteristics of physicists to institutions and society at large? Because that is going to significantly affect how effective we can be in solving problems of the society. Uh, okay, so starting with the reading, um, well, first of all, I found out that science funding, uh, science, science funding structures do matter, okay? Uh, now you can say, well, that looks quite obvious, uh, long-term science technology strategy uh, is important, uh, but it's not just that, okay? First of all, uh, establishing a long-term strategy is not that easy. Uh, it is difficult to charter in a global world. Uh, you need to make, uh, well, decisions between specialization versus building a broad capacity, finding niches of sustainable growth, okay? So there are these, uh, you, are, you need to be integrated to the world as a whole, but at the same time, you need to just develop those specializations that will make you valuable to build collaborations with the rest of the, the, the, the, the society, the, the physics community at large. Uh, it also needs, we also need like dedicated people from all kinds of backgrounds, this sort of strategy building. Uh, it's not just specialized strategy and funding departments. There are departments like that and uh, strategy budget department and uh, they really need uh, dedicated people, scientists of different backgrounds uh, coming and uh, playing roles. But beyond building the strategy, even the way you do science funding does matter about how science evolves, okay? Limits on the number of projects, number of people you can put on a project, refereeing process, salaries to students and researchers, possibility of competition between funding agencies, uh, having certain expense items or not, Okay, in your in project proposals, possibility of reinventing the wheel. Okay, giving your researchers occasionally or academicians the ability, the money to build something from scratch, despite the fact it has already been built. Even okay, these sort of things um, all needs to be balanced. And if you uh, do not work on these things, uh, the the the formalizations that you have ex, uh, put in terms of how funding is uh, provided really changes the, the, the composition of the, the physics. And you are going to see that the way we are structured, the way uh, physics community is structured, also affects the physics that they do, okay? Physics turns out to be a cultural thing, and you need to take this component into account. By the way, a, a side note of that is that internal regulations in Turkish mevzuat does matter, okay? In this case, I, I call this Okay, so, uh, um, well, what do I mean by that? Uh, well, obviously, all institutions need some regulations for proper and auditable operations. Uh, but uh, you have to understand that certain institutions should be agile, others should have greater inertia. And uh, certainly, one size does not fit all, and particularly for institutions of active R&D. Uh, now, that means uh, a fine balance needs to be set between inertia and agility. The whole body of regulations, this mevzuat, is, can be considered like the fixed field, okay? So you want to take an action, and that action needs to, there's an energy that needs to be paid. There's a force that you need to apply. And light decisions are subject to fewer regulations, so actions based on such decisions can be executed with small amount of force, whereas heavy topics, uh, are subject to more regulation and carry large inertia. They need great effort to update and reform. So you need to be really careful about this. You need to go back and uh, think about how you do regulations. This should be considered a, a, a some sort of specialized science topic as well. We need to figure out how to model this properly so that this balance is set. And how do you move through any field? Well, of course, uh, well, you start with the first principles. Okay, 
in this case, constitution, then law, then regulation, okay? And quite often, uh, I found out that people got stuck in the same seeming unresolvable loop, but they forgot how they ended up in that loop in the first place, okay? So there, is, there seems to be a problem that, is, that looks unsolvable. I just say, why can't we fix this? And I get various answers, and people really forgot what the really initial starting point was, okay? So you just need to step back from time to time, identify the path of least resistance. So you need to find the correct institution department, and then you should do observations and perform experiments. You should, for instance, write a, a, a special letter in a certain way, you, you, you get a response, and then based on that response, you reiterate and uh, learn from the process. As you do this, um, you should never trust the answers and solutions that are not proven to, to be derivable from first principles. If someone comes and tells me, I have built this device, but it doesn't agree with the law of conservation of energy, I just say, well, you must be doing something wrong. If a certain regulation seems to be in disagreement with the constitution, you just need to say, well, you must be misinterpreting this, okay? And uh, finally, uh, well, you need to collaborate. Uh, just the way we do science, uh, you need to find people who see the problem from different sides. By the way, as you are, find, as you are starting to find the people, you realize that titles and labels quite often matter. And uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, this is an unfortunate fact. And um, uh, this actually brought, well, well, well I, I encountered this problem uh, mainly when I tried to define what a scientist or physicist is, because the way the, the government agencies treat you is the way they see you. If they see me as an engineer, they treat me differently than a physicist. So um, um, uh, as we know, by the way, this is of course nothing surprising. This is just a reflection of the society's view of the physics as a profession. Uh, medical doctors are somewhat larger or equal to engineers and who are somewhat larger and equal to physicists in, in many people's um, in minds, okay? And uh, moreover, uh, true and flexible engineers, the people who actually solve problem solvers are actually quite difficult to find. So the degree doesn't really mean anything. So then that goes back to uh, the question of how, what a physicist is, and then how we tell this to people that uh, they matter, okay? Um, first of all, I realized that science community itself and science educators play an important role in cultivating the images of who scientists are. Um, we have these internal discussions from time to time, okay? Uh, some of us say, well, are string theorists, theorists doing physics? Are experimentalists some sort of glorified plumbers or something like that? Is a physicist a person who goes on long this, this long contemplative um, uh, hidden, um, how do you say, excursions, and then just try to write the one formula for the universe or whatever system that they're trying to model, okay? So we have the, we, we just give uh, these sort of, we, we feed these sort of questions um, or uh, pre, pre um, uh, how do you say, um, um, preconditions, um, um, and we try to put, uh, we, we, we introduce them to the society. We also teach these um, hero type physicists or hero type scientists, like he came or she came and he wrote this and she wrote this and everybody was happy. So uh, people, physics students who come to, to, the, to the department, they think that they are just going to do some of these items, whatever they find most interesting, and all of a sudden they are going to solve the mysteries of the universe. Uh, so um, do, throughout this reading, to understand the funding agency, I found out that uh, how the community defines who physicists are has a huge impact on how the society perceives us. This is one of the readings I did. Um, there is a book by Ivan Rhys Morus uh, called when physics became king, it is about how uh, physics uh, started to mold out of natural uh, philosophy and become a science of its own throughout the 19th century. And uh, uh, there, there, there, there is this really interesting discussion uh, throughout that period uh, about uh, who the man of science, in this case, the electrician, for instance, as the example, the electric scientist, which is some, some form of physicist anyway. Um, and he asks, the, the author asks, um, uh, was he the disinterested discoverer of natural principles? Was he the flamboyant showman 
shocking, sometimes quite literally his audience, well, or was he uh, the hard-headed inventor of revolutionary technologies? You can see there is a, there's a good map of here uh, to our uh, current world. Are we talking about uh, these um, uh, silent, uh, um, uh, soft-spoken uh, terrorists um, in, in, in academic institutions? Uh, are we talking about people who just say, look, I built this and this is going to change the world? Um, or are we, well, uh, or just uh, show these things and try to impress people with them? Or um, are we these semi-applied scientists who are semi-engineers or something like that? Okay, so this was a big discussion throughout a full century. And at the end, they realized that it's neither of these three. It is the all of it, okay? So physics is not just what you do in the lab. Physics is not just what you do with your theory. It's not what you do with uh, applied science. It's all uh, together. And strangely, this is obvious to us, but um, we don't really present it that way when the society asks us. Um, as an example of that, is um, what I will call a complexity frontier. Those of you who are um, uh, in the high energy physics uh, field know that uh, we uh, generally split the field into three frontiers. The energy frontier, the intensity frontier, and the cosmic frontier. So cosmic frontier is like things like dark matter, dark energy searches, astroparticle physics, etc. The intensity uh, for, uh, frontier is what we do, it's looking for proton decays, neutrino physics, and uh, maybe like things like um, uh, B factories, charm factories, etc. And then there's the energy frontier uh, where we push for particles, searching for particles of heavier mass. Um, now, this is how we do. And uh, this is uh, also how, for instance, um, represented board for the Turkish experiment particle physics community had organized itself many years ago. But now, as I go through, uh, I realized that uh, maybe as a broader physics community, not just particle physics, but in general, we should um, uh, define similar things and we should promote them to the society. So why don't we have, for instance, explicitly promote a complexity frontier? Um, this is, I think, um, this is going to have an impact. We need to realize it's not just um, uh, uh, cosmology or particle physics that attracts uh, people, uh, young people, it is really, um, well, complexity science as well. I, I suggest now that we let engineers, scientists, mathematicians who define themselves as physicists be physicists, okay? And we should advertise the whole endeavor uh, as a, well, the whole, the, this, this endeavor as a whole. Um, uh, there's the side note on electricity. Um, well, uh, this found, I found rather interesting while doing this reading. No one had observations about electricity in the 19th century, of course, um, mm -hmm. uh, unlike the times that we live in. Uh, people needed to be shown that this is the nature of the world revealed. So when you do electrical experiments, you were showing people what the real world is like, despite the fact that they don't necessarily see it in their daily lives readily, okay? And um, in that regard, I think electricity is perhaps the first previously unknown natural thing like a slinky drop or a flying spinning wheel demo, but on a grand scale. Uh, moreover, uh, we know electricity is kind of like a connecting medium. Um, it is responsible for chemical reactions, all kinds of sparks and light, mechanical force production, magnets, etc. all of these things. And uh, so it is a, a nice way to uh, appeal to the public. So it's no wonder that some natural philosophers attributed fundamental importance to it, and thought that they had discovered the true nature of nature, true nature of nature, and got one step closer to the creator's mind. Uh, now, 21st century, uh, uh, we have so many concepts and devices, like electrical devices, uh, or concepts like energy, that we kind of feed to the society from an early age. But uh, we have to remind ourselves that this is not kind of natural to the human psyche. Uh, our, our Aristotelian uh, physics worldview is not familiar with these things. So we should be ready to engage the public, the society, and for instance, uh, lawmakers um, and administrators, uh, realizing that their understanding of even these concepts that we now feel more comfortable, very comfortable with, 
not necessarily are clear, clear cut crisp things for them. Uh, every new discovery, every new problem that originates from or that needs that seek solutions from technology, they have to be uh, well described to all of these people. And while we are doing that, we have to use the correct formulation. A good scientist knows that you can approach a problem and if you know the proper math, the better math for it, the, the problem just gets so much easier all of a sudden. So this is a critical thing. I have observed over a number of meetings between administrators and technocrats and the physics community. And I can clearly say that they are not speaking the same language, okay? It's like these, uh, some Romance languages, like one of them is speaking Portuguese, the other is speaking Spanish. They think they understand each other, but they don't. So uh, I think it's critical that the community engages the government institutions regularly and um, perhaps organization of a fair representative board uh, by community would be one way. And uh, for instance, uh, Turkish physical society can play an important role here. And science policy making and outreach can be critical, can be as critical as doing the sciences well itself. So we need these multilingual people uh, who can talk to uh, these administrations and give, give us, get us the, the money. Uh, as I try to conclude, um, this is Nukan's call to the community. Uh, I can say perhaps more than ever, Nukan is now your place to be. Uh, Tenmark has a broad vision uh, for being um, a powerhouse for all kinds of physical sciences, not just nuclear physics or uh, Bohr research or some chemical things, it's everything. Uh, with attention to bringing together products to the end users and businesses, but also maintaining and expanding its historical role as supporter of big science. Uh, Nuken, as the inheritor of TAIC's R&D facilities, wants to forge new and sustainable collaborations with all sectors of Turkish India, uh, Turkish academia and industry. Uh, please send all kinds of ideas that you ha might have, uh, uh, either for doing applied research or basic science or applied science, whatever you like, okay? Uh, I can give you a couple examples. For instance, we have a 30 MeV proton beam. We want to open the doors to all researchers now. Uh, there is now a restructuring, the R&D uh, hall of the, the, the, the facility is going to be separated and um, we we want to hear from you if you want to uh, develop work on development of new radio pharmaceuticals if you want to irradiate something and see what happens just for fun or if you want to do some sort of nuclear cross-section measurements you are more than welcome okay we have this thing out there and we need people to to make use of it we also need ideas for new research reactors uh, their applications um, well, I just don't, I don't want to just, um, how do you say, uh, limit your imagination. Come with any physical science idea and we are going to listen to you and we are going to try to find ways to, to, to fund it. Um, as I say here, we are open to discussing funding alternatives, students doing a thesis um, uh, with us. And uh, we also welcome you, of course, um, whenever you want to come. Uh, for short, maybe also long-term assignments. Uh, companies would like to join the work on commercializing our products, develop frontier projects, they're also welcome. Uh, now, I, as I conclude, um, I wanted to conclude with this one final note, and I'd like to thank uh, Professor uh, Berker for reminding me of this uh, talk. Um, at the opening of um, um, uh, Turkish Physical Society's 33rd uh, meeting, um, someone uh, made a bold claim. Uh, the times we are living are as special as they can get, even as compared to those almost magical times of the Colbert, Solveig conferences. And the 21st century is particularly unique within the entire history of the world. Now that is a really, really bold claim. And uh, there was some justification in that talk, but uh, main reason for that, uh, we are now as a species, um, in uh, global problems, and for many of them, we need global solutions. And um, five years ago, the, the, the, the, the method for reaching those global solutions was to engage the physics community. We have, um, we have, we have a lot of expertise in working international, um, uh, building international bridges, um, attacking difficult problems in small steps, 
all those things that I counted that are useful to me as an administrator when I started working at McCann. And, uh, but most importantly, uh, we must talk to everybody from children to policymakers without any prejudice over and over patiently and remind our communities that science is the one and only proven method to counter the problems that we face and to disperse the many clouds over our planet's horizon. So um, I hope um, with this spirit, um, uh, this um, um, conference uh, is going to have a lot of uh, fun discussions. I'll be more than happy to talk to you about um, uh, my uh, funny, uh, well, all of these things are of course broad view. I, I have a lot of funny stories, how I tackled them. Um, well, okay, uh, so I'll be happy to talk about those things. If you want to hear about what I do as a scientist at my own lab, this was not the talk for that, but um, I have had a, a number of people um, who have been working with me and uh, who have been taking care of Kahve Lab in my absence. Uh, I'd like to thank them here and um, we'll be happy to talk about those things as well uh, in the break. Thank you. Thank you, Akcha. Any questions, comments to Akcha? One hand rising. Akshan, thank you very much, but uh, I uh, have a question about your future perspectives for accelerators at Sarai Do mm -hmm. you have some plans or some way for this? Um, well, first of all, we are um, definitely not going to stay with this 30 MeV. We want to uh, carry it further. And um, uh, there are a number of ideas on the table, but um, uh, we are more than welcome to hear ideas from the community. This is one of the calls that I had. Um, um, well, we, we, we, have to, we have to split between uh, producing uh, the radio pharmaceuticals that uh, the country needs and um, doing uh, basic or applied accelerator science. So um, I, I don't want to just um, say one or the other but uh, we are more than uh, happy to, to hear. Actually, one of the things that I was unable to resolve uh, in this whole process was the establishment of a, um, of a um, how do you say, really uh, um, competitive and really uh, antagonistic um, uh, advisory body for Nuken. Okay, so people who want to come and who want to take their, um, how do you say, swords or pens out and fight for different ideas. Uh, unfortunately, um, I was unable to resolve um, the, the Higgs field for uh, that particular issue, but I think um, we, will, we will resolve that. In the meantime, uh, you are, we are happy to hear um, openly, of course. Any Actually, the, the straight way is to have a, an order higher proton beam. Mm -hmm. Because uh, really, for radiative hardness, you need to be more up to 300 yes, MeV. Yeah. Yes. But it is also the energy you can use for uh, hadron therapy for some parts. Mm -hmm. And then uh, so something like 600 MeV for hadron therapy, and then 1 GeV for accelerator driven systems. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this. You can yeah, uh, but, but this way as a sure, this, this makes sense, of course. Uh, but even for this, I feel that we need to, to split into to maybe pieces like uh, about 70 MeV, for instance, um, that can be motivated uh, by producing certain radio pharmaceuticals. Um, this, um, uh, some new trends are coming up, some new hot things. Um, so uh, maybe we can motivate going up to 70 MeV again using this sort of medical application, then from there move to 200 uh, to fit to uh, European Space Agency's um, uh, well, regulations, etc. So yes, um, these are things in mind. Any further comments, questions? Emmer has a question. Any questions on Zoom, by the way? Guess not. Please. A very interesting talk. I have a question to the physicist administrator. Um, 
when an organization an institution becomes large and has more complex tasks some sort of hierarchical organization seems to be mandatory mm -hmm. but the more hierarchical levels there are there are the less the slower and the less efficient the organization appears to become yes do you have any comments and possibly a solution to this conundrum okay now this is a rather rather difficult question um, I think it, it would also uh, be a, a nice paper where we try to model this uh, individual human beings or uh, research groups as uh, parts of an organism or, or and then uh, try to see uh, if we can get some, um, I don't know, nonlinear dynamics out of it. Um, but um, uh, that said, um, it is, I, I see that uh, some level of hierarchy is uh, unavoidable. Uh, what needs to be done is to keep uh, certain pieces of that hierarchy um, uh, still out of, out of the hierarchy. Okay, so for instance, uh, one way would be to say, look, um, I am a, a funding agency and I'm doing these sort of research, but at the same time, I want agile other things to happen. So you just um, um, fund smaller groups to do the same project and you, you just need to spend money, of course, for it, but you just let them compete, okay? And as they become, uh, uh, well, as they become more and more um, certain ones, I mean, it's like a survival of the physics, as, as a certain group becomes stronger, the other ones uh, should get uh, connected to it. So the hierarchy happens organically instead of uh, just being uh, dictated by um, um, some written rules. But okay, I mean, this is a cop-out answer. I don't really know the answer uh, well, and I'd be happy to, to hear if you have any opinions. Uh, one thing I'm entirely sure though, is that if you wait long enough, that hierarchy, um, even when it starts with reasonable um, uh, motivations, uh, after a while, or that hierarchy becomes uh, ingrained in stone, okay? And um, uh, this um, requires, active effort uh, from the organization um, um, to, to fight against it, okay? You can't completely remove it, but um, at the moment, one of the things that I find most difficult to do, one of the, one of the things that I found most difficult to, is to talk to um, my, um, well, uh, collaborators, or I call them collaborators, but um, by government uh, rules, they are my um, subordinates, okay? And I have difficulty uh, saying, look, tell me what is wrong, okay? So the, uh, because it, the, the hierarchy is set in such a way that you don't want to say the negative things to your superior, okay? This I uh, had uh, a lot of difficulty um, with. Uh, one thing that I tried to introduce at Nukyan is how we uh, did things at Boazici, okay? Uh, all the... Uh, the management starts from the bottom and goes up, okay? The decisions are taken uh, democratically by the department, um, all the members of the department, irrespective of their titles. And then this is relegated to, with its explanation to the faculty, which again discusses, etc. But quite often, the decision of the department is the one that is taken, unless there is some really, really big overarching reason not to do it, okay? Uh, this, I think, keeps... Uh, the young uh, blood always in the system. So even with the hierarchy out there, um, some of the, the activity still goes on. But uh, okay, I mean, um, I think we should just uh, really talk about this over a long um, um, well, dinner and <laughs> a lot of drinks. Long, long lifetime. Long yes. lifetime. I'll be happy to provide the dinner and the drinks. Excellent. Okay. Um, Sorry, By the way, this is of course not the, the, the talk that you were probably waiting for. Um, I was also not prepared to give this talk, uh, mm -hmm. but um, um, as I gave in the disclaimer, this is not an article, it's an essay. So this, this, is, this is also, by the way, something that I had most difficulty when I was in uh, junior high school in the, in the Turkish uh, literature, uh, whatever, lessons. Uh, I always scored top points from grammatical rules because it was like mathematics, you know. But from writing essays, I always um, uh, fumbled. 
uh, my my uh, teacher at the time one time called my parents and said Erkcan can only write encyclopedia articles he, he, he is unable to write any opinion pieces uh, so this was a very difficult talk for me I apologize if it went uh, too uh, too broad okay Erkcan uh, one uh, comment before drinking uh, I think that <laughs> Democracy science is very dangerous thing. Huh, uh, you mean, of course, uh, well, democracy in how you build things, how you move on things is, I think, uh, is the, the, the, well, is the way to go. But whether we decide on whether uh, an idea is correct or not, of course, well, the final I better is, of course, the experiment. There is no discussion about that. So I understand your objection. As, as, as a last remark, maybe all the things that you just mentioned and including what Omer also asked, they're not specific to Turkey. It's, it's true wherever a human being or body of human beings are grouped within a task or I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, we also are aware and many or some of us have lived abroad and experienced similar things at different positions. Uh, so how come in Turkey, we don't have a still, I mean, better efficiency in all these charts, in all these organizations, in all this running? Uh, is it a miss, uh, uh, um, I mean, a missing culture over the years? Uh... Do you have any, any, I don't know. I, I don't really know. I think I think um, certain things are, as you said, is just human nature. We we are who we are, and uh, but but uh, one thing I I can just uh, mention there is that whenever you uh, structure um, any body, any hierarchy, uh, you really need to take into account um, the uh, past and current. Uh, interactions between the, the parts that build up that hierarchy. Okay, so uh, one model does not necessarily applies to another country, another locale. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you if you just want to make a copy of the Office of Science under DOE um, in Turkey, this is not. I think this not this not this might not necessarily work. Okay. Uh, so you just need to understand the needs of the society. You need to understand how the society looks at things. And uh, you also need to uh, take these into account and uh, structure hierarchies uh, using that. No, so, no, no, this I agree. Yes. My, my point was, for example, if you were in the States, then would, mm -hmm. would the funding agency in the States look as a physicist, just like the funding agency in Turkey, looks as if it is or they have different well, uh, perception uh, because okay. of various I, other I, I think like, I think I think there's yeah. a difference in perception this, this is but that I'm is uh, well my hypothesis is that that is just a reflection of how the society sees physics okay then that's why I mentioned it throughout my talk that we need to make sure um, the society learns what really physics is okay physics is all of these things and they need to be presented to the society in such a way that once the society absorbs what physics is the way we define it as physicists, uh, then uh, the, the funding agencies or, I don't know, governments, institutions, they are going to respond to that. Mm -hmm. uh, when I talked to various administrators at different levels uh, of the government, I found out that um, they really very rarely know uh, what I'm talking about. And it's not just like they don't know about some physics or uh, some mm -hmm. sort of conceptual thing. They also don't know how, for instance, an academy runs, okay? They don't know um, how a, a research effort is done. Uh, they also see uh, these funding agencies that support science as some sort of um, complementary thing that is good to have, but not necessarily needed, okay? This, I think, is, uh, it needs to be broken. And that um, starts with how the community, I think, sees himself, he sees, sees itself, and how then the society sees us. Thank you. Okay. Okay. There's one question up there. Last question. Maybe. Uh, hello. My question is, does Nukan have an active and working reactor? And do you plan to use it to make people less afraid of the nuclear energy? 
Okay, good question. Uh, uh, Nuken has a, a five megawatt um, uh, research reactor uh, located at the Chakmeje campus. Uh, it is not running. Uh, it is kept in uh, tip-top running condition, though. Okay, so if if the if the authority says, well, okay, you can go ahead, we can run it. It's in that condition. Uh, there is also a, a, a plan to um, uh, renovate uh, this and actually build a, a more capable research reactor. There is active um, research topic on this, um, on building, well, first a feasibility study, and then you have like, you build the conceptual design report, et cetera. So there's an ongoing work towards that. Um, so uh, that was the first part of your question, whether we have one. Uh, the, the, the only running um, research reactor in, the, in, in our country is at E2. Um, this is uh, a smaller uh, trigger reactor. Uh, this, uh, then there was another question. What was the second question? Ah, okay. Uh, how do we use it to, to make people uh, less uncomfortable uh, about nuclear power? Uh, this is this is um, a challenging thing. Uh, Czech Meje, um, well, regularly organizes um, uh, lectures. Uh, we our, our personnel visits um, uh, local middle schools and high schools uh, to give talks and introduce what we do. And um, um, so uh, the, the reactor there is mentioned. Okay, we just say, look, we had a reactor that has been running since 1962. And um, uh, it's all safe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so there is an effort uh, um, uh, at, at a small scale, if you like, uh, towards this end. Uh, with the uh, restructuring of Taek into Tenmak, uh, we also now have a public relations, uh, a dedicated public relations office, and uh, they try to use the social media uh, to uh, talk about what radiation is, how it is useful and uh, why it is not something that we should be scared of uh, and this sort of thing. Um, I hope that uh, it will eventually get some uh, traction, um, but um, I, well, I think it's going to take a long, long time. If you have ideas about this, I'll be happy to hear. Um, uh. Okay, let's thank our speaker once again uh, for this. Mind and discussion opening the speech. Uh, now I switch to Turkish. Bu arada şunu söyleyeyim. Ee, Erkan Tanmak'ı temsilen bir konuşma verdi. Sabah da TÜBİTAK Başkanımız Hasan Hoca'nın bir konuşması vardı. Öyle arasında da kendisiyle sohbet etme fırsatı bulduk burada e, masa etrafında birçoğumuzla. Oturdu konuştu. Daha sonra... Yemek arasında da sohbet ederken çok ilginç bu tespiti o yüzden yapmak istiyorum. Ee, e, Erkcan'ın Tenmak'la ilgili tecrübesinde aktardığı durum analiziyle Hasan Hoca'nın aslında TÜBİTAK çerçevesinde veya e, farklı devlet kurum kuruluşlarında YÖK gibi diğerleri gibi tecrübesi e, farklı zamanlarda mesela bana aktardı. Bugün içinde ve aynı tondan aktardınız. E, Aynı analizi yaptılar. Bu anlamda aslında Türkiye'de en azından bizi ilgilendiren funding agency boyutunda kurum kuruluşların e, şu anda yakın, birbirine yakın ve e, uzlaşmaya, anlaşmaya müsait bir farkındalık içinde olduğu belki de ender zamanlardan biriyiz. E, bunu kendi adıma tespit edince paylaşmak sizlerle istedim. E, dört buçuğa kadar bir molamız var. Saat dört buçukta poster e, oturumları başlamış olacak. O yüzden... Poster sunumu yapacak olan e, tüm katılımcıların posterlerini Mümtaz Göztepe salonunda hazır bulundurmuş olmalarını tekrar hatırlatarak e, iyi molalar diliyorum.